Hi there, Human Geographers. This lesson is going to take a look at three different parts of Key Issue 3. We're going to take a look at the demographic transition model, we're going to take a look at population pyramids, and then the end of the Key Issue gives some examples of countries located around the world and where they applied these two models. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at the demographic transition model. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the demographic transition model. The demographic transition model officially has four stages in it. A lot of the images that we look at have a fifth stage, and we'll talk more about that later. Stage one is the first one we're going to take a look at. And when we look at stage one, we're going to see that it is characterized by high birth rates and high death rates. And it has a steady lower population. Most of human history has been spent in stage one. And NDCs were in stage one until even the 16 to 1700s before we start seeing them leave stage one. So stage one is where we see populations stay steady, but they are low. Stage two of the demographic transition model is where we start to see death rates lower immensely. Birth rates are going to stay the same, but the death rates are starting to decrease. This is due to the Industrial Revolution. We start seeing increases in medicine. We start seeing increases in health care. Uh, we start seeing penicillin being invented. We know about pasteurization at this point. So as we go along in this stage, we're going to see a huge increase in the population because the birth rates are staying the same. Death rates are the part that's plummeting down. We start to see a lot of people moving to cities because machines are taking jobs that are on the um, out in farmland tractors, machines like that. So people are flooding into the cities and we start seeing cities grow at this point. Now in more modern day history, Sub-Saharan Africa was pushed into stage two because they were lagging behind in stage one, but they move into stage two because of what we call the medical revolution. And because of the medical revolution and new vaccinations and better medicines, we're gonna start seeing places like Sub-Saharan Africa move into stage three of the demographic transition model. So stage two, the important thing to remember about that is this is where we see the highest rate of natural increase. This is where we see our populations grow the most. Stage three is the moderate growth stage. When we take a look at stage three, we start to see the CBRs decreasing. The crude death rate continues to drop down. The crude birth rate is starting to join it now. So we still see an increase in population. We still see a higher NIR. But what we also begin to see is that there's fewer and fewer children being born. And this is due to several reasons. One, the infant mortality rate has decreased. Due to better medicines, we're seeing more and more children live, so people are having fewer and fewer kids. We also know that lifestyle in the cities is a little bit more cramped. And you don't need children to be working on the farms, so families are having fewer and fewer children. The key behind uh, stage three is that we start seeing growth, but it's a little bit slower. And we're going to continue to see that decrease until we move into stage four. Stage four is called the low growth stage. We also will see it called the zero population growth stage, or ZPG. We typically see the total fertility rate at 2.0 to 2.1. Women are entering the workforce typically at this stage, and we also see them pursuing educational desires. Entertainment is being more readily available to people as their incomes increase, and we see people becoming more and more involved in having fun and not settling down and having families right away. Birth control is also a major factor as it becomes cheaper and more readily available in MDCs. So again, the key factor behind stage four is that we see low to no growth. That leads into a phantom stage five, as it's sometimes called, where we begin to see some more changes. And that takes us to our final stage. Stage five is a phantom stage. Some geographers agree it's there, some disagree. This is where we see death rates exceed birth rates. 
over a long period of time, causing the population to decline and even go into possible negative numbers with the natural increase rate. The reason why some geographers don't fully agree that it's there is because this could be just a pattern as part of stage four where they're just going through a cycle of having more deaths and births. But when we look at countries like Italy and Russia, we typically see that they are not becoming closer to, to reproduction stage of 2.1. So that's why we have created a stage five. The idea that you have negative growth over a longer period of time. All right, and that takes us to population pyramids. As we get to explore population pyramids, the key is that we first of all have to look that they're all set up the same way. Population is always across the bottom. That can be done by percentage of a society, or it can be done in the millions. Down the middle of the population pyramid diagram is always the age groups, and we'll always see them in increments of five. We'll see zero to four, five to nine, 10 to 14, and so on. Males are always on the left of the diagram, females are always on the right of the diagram. If the sex diagram, each sex diagram as it's sometimes called, is confusing, just cover half of it, turn it, and you're going to see it's just a bar graph. And we're just comparing how many females and males we have in each age group, and then how many total we have in each age group. Now when we compare this to the demographic transition model, what we're going to see is in stage one, a population pyramid is very, very steep. It's got a very wide base, and it's a little bit narrower in the middle. At stage two, our middle of our pyramid is starting to fatten a little bit as life expectancy continues to increase. At stage three, we start to see a little bit of a rectangular shape taking hold. Because life expectancy is continuing to increase, we also start seeing the childbirth rate starting to lower. Finally, we have stage four, and in stage four, we really see the rectangular shape taking place. We see that people are living longer and longer, and we're having fewer and fewer children. The final stage, stage five, that phantom stage, we're going to see the reverse Christmas tree. We're going to see what sometimes is called the cup shape. And we see that we have a very small base, but a very wide top, as we see people getting older and older, and fewer and fewer children coming together. So that is the population pyramids, and here in some examples that we gave with it. What the rest of our chapter does is discuss specific examples for each one of those.